the orthodox Christian and the spirit of the world. In the previous videos, we have seen the main spiritual movements in the world, such as the charismatic movement, the new age movement, the ecumenical movement, and we have also seen the Christian virtues and the passions that the spirit of the world tries to sell to us. In this video, we are going to look at the danger that the spirit of the world poses on family, especially the kids, and we suggest a solution to deal with that. Where is the spirit of the world? The spirit of the world is everywhere. The trained eye can see the spirit of the world everywhere it looks. But for the untrained person, the spirit of the world remains hidden. It is hidden in the people around us. It is hidden in what they do, in what they say, in how they act. However, after watching all these videos, you should be able to see the spirit of the world and take guard. The spirit of the world is in playgrounds. It's in coffee shops. It's at schools. It's everywhere. And the kids are exposed to the spirit of the world. They are exposed to what the spirit of the world is selling, to all these passions. And it is strong because the passions are in us and they become stronger and stronger via our senses, via what we see and what we hear. And like we said, the kids, since they are just kids and they have not developed any immunity towards the spirit of the world, they can be affected easily. The spirit of the world trips the strong. Why? Because the psychological passions are inside us and they become stronger and stronger with time as we are exposed more and more to the spirit of the world. If we do not take heed, if we are not careful, then those passions overcome us. And then the spirit of the world snatches our souls through atheism, through different religious practices such as yoga and meditation and anything else. And then we find ourselves lost in the world and we are out of the Christian way. There is a strong war on Christian virtues. As we have seen in the previous videos, all virtues are under attack. Everything is under attack. The Christian way of life is under attack and we'd better be careful. Virtues are decreasing in the world. There's less godliness, less chastity, less humility, and less people seeking those virtues. That's why the spirit of the world is taking over the world. The society around us is drowning in pleasure and pleasure-seeking behavior. It's like their ultimate goal out of this life. They are drowning in their own individualism, love of self and no care for others. The consumer mentality is taking over the whole planet. People are becoming mere consumers, not thinkers, not those that care about others, not those that love their neighbors. They are just becoming consumers seeking satisfaction from items they buy. The pleasure seeking behavior is taking over, like we said, and we end up with a sick society that has no resistance to whatever pleasure is being thrown at it, to whatever passions are sprouting, it has no immunity. Plus, the society is ever-changing. 
the ethical standards are changing, religious beliefs are changing, and the scientific so-called facts are changing. Society is adopting non-Christian standards, just things coming from different cultures, from different backgrounds, from different religious beliefs, suddenly they become part of the society around us. Human rights are adopting things that are against God rights, such as abortion and same-sex marriage. The science is still trying to discover the origin of the world and the origin of species, although we as Christians we already know the answer. So what happens to our kids that are living in this society that is ever-changing and is not really stable? There's a big war on our kids. Our kids have not developed the mental ability to resist these ideas. They are just sitting there watching their own cartoons or TVs and these ideas are being installed into their brains. They have no resistance. The war on the kids is from all fronts. It's at school, at the playground, with the friends, everywhere. Everything is changing. It is constantly changing and it's becoming less and less Christian. The virtues are disappearing, like we said before. The kids are just inhaling the new standards. It's becoming part of them. The new standards in society, whatever they are. The new knowledge, the new practices, the new beliefs, which keep changing. But they are coming part of the kids, and the kids just keep changing. The kids are not stable. They don't have any specific beliefs, any fixed beliefs, because everything around them is changing. So there's a big danger on our kids. Kids cannot reflect on themselves. They cannot reflect on their behavior unless we strongly urge them to reflect on their behavior because they are just acting and acting like whatever they see around them. The society by itself is not stable. It keeps changing. How can we expect our kids to be stable? So the solution for reaching eternal life is a Christian way of life. And this is what the church has been advertising for 2,000 years. It's the same message. It was valid then, it is valid now. The parents have to behave in a Christian way. At home, at the outside, at work, wherever they are, they have to behave in a Christian way. So the parents should internalize the Christian beliefs. When parents behave, kids watch and learn. Kids learn from the behavior of their parents more than they learn from the talking. When parents talk to their kids, they might listen or they might not. But when they behave, the kids learn quickly. The kids should learn to pray at home. They also should learn to act properly in a Christian way. So the parents have to put some effort to help their kids learn how to pray. They have to explain behaviors to them. They have to explain prayers and words and pleading and saints. Kids should read the saints' lives and saint stories. All kids need heroes. They look at their parents, but they need heroes. The heroes on TV do not adhere to Christian virtues. When kids watch TV, 
when they see what is happening in the outside world, they internalize those motives, those behaviors, those ways of thinking, and then they start imitating them. We do not want that. We want the kids to learn from the saints. The saints are our heroes. So we want them to learn from the best. The parents should explain Christianity. They should explain what is a Christian life. They should explain the purpose of life from a Christian point of view. To tell the kids that they have to behave in a certain way in order to win. Otherwise, the kids will not know why they should behave in a certain way. They will not know how to behave in certain situations. So the parents have to put a lot of effort in order to help the kids learn and understand Christianity. The parents should also explain how devils work. If they cannot do it, then they should go to a priest and have the priest explain to the kids. It is a war of thoughts. The kids, anyway, they watch cartoons. And in their cartoons, they see monsters, they see aliens, they see devils as well, and ghosts. And all of these are behaving either in a bad way or in a funny way. So sometimes kids think that devils are funny or they are nice. And they learn the wrong things. They learn the wrong behaviors. So since they are watching devils and monsters anyway, we might take advantage of that and explain to them what are devils, how they behave, how they attack us through giving us the wrong ideas to misbehave. And then they can understand that I don't want to misbehave. We have to encourage kids to live in a Christian way, like we said before, listen to mommy and daddy, pray fast, repent any sins, confess the sins, whatever mistakes made. At some age, the kids should be able to tell what things they have done, what wrong they have done. And then they are able to confess it. And then they are able to correct their behavior. Church and monastery visits help a lot. So they understand that there is this community that is different from the other community outside that is teaching them the wrong things. At least now they can feel that they belong somewhere. We also have to isolate kids from sin situations. Whatever TV programs or cartoons or a neighbor that swears all the time, let's just isolate the kids from these situations. Let them learn the right way of living, the right way of thinking, the right way of behavior so that we don't lose them. What can we learn from the saints? A quiet mind is better than a lot of chatter. With a quiet mind, people can think better and they can avoid becoming addicted to attention as what is happening in the rest of the world. Everybody is just seeking attention and seeking more and more attention, trying to become a star somehow. If they can't succeed on screen, they try to become a star on social media. They try to become a star in a different way. Everybody is just seeking more and more attention. While on the contrary, our saints try to hide out somewhere in the wilderness so that they can live a quiet life and reflect and behave in a really Christian way and get closer to God. If the kids do not try to learn to have a quiet mind, they cannot develop an ability to reflect 
on their own behavior and on their own thinking. We can also learn that contentment is better than fishing in the mud. Contentment with what we have. We should be content and happy. It's much better than being greedy and going into the outside world and trying to fish for something shiny, whatever that is, it, and it ends up being a garbage can or something. Staying away from love of possessions. Possessions do not actually give us satisfaction. They just give us a transient feeling of happiness. Look, this is something new. I love it. And after a week, it's gone. We should avoid teaching our kids the love of possessions. We can also learn from the saints that patience is better than rushing. Patience and endurance are very important characteristics and this is what we saw in the previous videos. Those that endure till the end shall win. We also learn humility from the saints. Humility gives us a relaxed attitude and a quiet mind. And it's better than seeking to become a star, which gives us anxiety and chaos. I hope that you found this series useful. God bless you.